Donnie and Dolly. The team is supported by ableauctions.ca. Closing your business, we can help. All of our guests on this Thursday, including John Shannon standing by, brought to you by the Vancouver Giants. Giants take on the Victoria Royals at the LEC Friday. Puck drop, 7 p.m. That's tomorrow, Rick. Grab a 6 or 12 game flex pack, starting as low as $129. Get all the details at VancouverGiants.com slash tickets. A Babe Pratt update for you. Walter Babe Pratt, as a matter of fact, uh, played for the New Westminster Royals. In three of his last four pro hockey seasons, Pacific Coast Hockey League, not the old uh, Western League, he did win the Hart Trophy while playing for the uh, Leafs in 1944. And, of course, long time, and people remind, uh, reminded me of this, a long time Hockey Night in Canada analyst. That's it. Doing games uh, out of the Coliseum. Remember, remember the 5 o'clock start I remember Saturdays him. at the Coliseum and, and Babe uh, did the games there. And the Canucks Best Defenseman Award is named after him. Yeah. Very good. You just found that out on Google. Uh, yeah. I know my stuff. Joining us now, uh, NHL analyst, co-host of the Bob McCallan podcast, it's John Shannon. John, thanks for doing this, sir. How are you? I'm good, Hall of Famer. How are you? Very good. Thank thank you for uh, acknowledging Congratulations. that. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank Congrats. You. Uh, long overdue. I w- uh, the other thing is you, you also forget that Tracy, Babe's yeah. son, yeah. played for the Canucks. Yeah. Uh, and the first game I ever produced for Hockey Night in Vancouver uh, babe was our analyst. Yeah, yep. so mm-hmm. it was kind of cool. So it yeah. goes back like late seventies. So yeah, and he was he was good. He was good. And Tracy was a good defenseman as well. But as he an was. analyst, I never saw. Believe it or not, Ryan, I never saw Babe play hockey. <laughs> but he won a Hart Trophy, so I'm guessing he was very good. And I, I loved him as an good. analyst as well. All right, John Shane Pinto suspended 41 games for violating mm-hmm. the NHL gambling rules. I don't know how much you know about uh, this, but a lot of people talking about hypocrisy here. What do you think? Well, I don't think it's hypocrisy. I mean, um, you know, I mean, sports teams, not just hockey, take advertising from breweries and, and liquor companies. And if a guy gets arrested for drunk driving, uh, you don't uh, turn the uh, turn their head at it. Uh, you know, I mean, the, the key thing is under the collective bargaining agreement and with a standard player's contract, the player is not supposed to to gamble. Uh, and those are the rules when you sign a contract that you have to live by. And there is an, in, there is, and it, I think it's even more important now with legal sports betting in a lot of jurisdictions uh, that the, the, the teams and the players are even cleaner than ever before with their information and with the fact that they're not conflicted. So to me, it, it, the new gambling partnerships accentuate that they have to be better and above board than ever before. What do you read into the fact that the NHL has let people know that he didn't bet on National Hockey League games? Well, I think that that's the legalese when you're talking about those betting partnerships. Mm -hmm. You know, whether it, whether it be FanDuel or, or, or Bet Rivers or Bet99, you know, all of those companies, they have to know that they're not being compromised, uh, with, uh, with, with Ottawa Senators games. Uh, and in any manner how it's affected, I think that that's probably uh, some transparency that uh, David Zimmerman, who's the chief legal counsel of the NHL, probably advised the commissioner that he we had better say that to make sure that uh, there's no some sort of malfeasance against the clubs or against the league when it comes to those partnerships. Moving on, uh, uh, John, the, the Canucks, they're four and two. What effect do you think Rick Tockett is having on this team? Well, just look at their goals against, I, I, I think, more than anything. Uh, I mean, they are playing much more responsibly in their own zone. And sure, they've had some hiccups. They're, every team has hiccups. Uh, but uh, the goal differential is so much better this year than it has been in past. And I think that's a that's a huge part of it. He's created uh, 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 not only in that part of the, of the game, but he's also created a level of accountability. You know, Rick's not the most loving soul Mm -hmm. when it comes to coaching hockey. And I think that uh, uh, there's a little bit of tough love that goes into the way that Rick Rick Tockett coaches. Uh, And and, and it's really showing through. I mean, they're still allowed to be creative in the offensive zone. They're still allowed to move the puck a lot of ways in the offensive zone, but certainly not in the defensive zone. 
John, what the heck is going on in Edmonton? One, four, and one start. Uh, McDavid's out. They allowed five goals in the third period in Minnesota the other night. They're 31st in the overall NHL standings. What is going on? I, I would tell you, Rick, that there are more errors, uh, mental errors, on this club. We've in the five days that we've five games that we've seen so far. Uh, I'm taking the one victory out of the mix. Um, people making stupid mistakes people making stupid mistakes uh, i mean uh, the game in minnesota they had minnesota it down three times and yet could not hold a lead evan bouchard made mistakes zach hyman made mistakes darnell nurse made mistakes uh everybody is not beyond reproach right now and it's all happening at the same time you know we have those teams that you say well it's never going to happen again because you have 10 or 11 guys have career years well this is the opposite of a career year right now the start of this season the way this team has played that nobody nobody is beyond criticism for the way they've played the game right now and and they know it there's a ton of pressure on in edmonton uh, particularly without Connor and particularly with the outdoor game yeah. on Sunday afternoon. Here's the other thing, Donnie. I, I, I would tell you that it, it's it, it's easily rectified. And, you know, a week from now when we're talking again, they might be back yeah. at 500. And that's the way the NHL has been going. There's not too many There's not too many surprises anymore in the NHL. Everybody can beat everyone. A uh, very interesting thing is happening in Anaheim uh, with the number two overall pick, Leo Carlson. They're not playing him every game, John. And it's called load management. They want to make sure they call. I've never heard that before. I've yeah. never heard that load management before. Well, you get, you hear it in the NBA, but yeah, I'm starting to hear. They want to make sure that the the rigors of the NHL, this kid is better in the second half. It's going to be interesting to see if it works, John. Because if it works, you know, other teams are going to do it with their high picks as well. It is a copycat league. And and the other thing is that you got to understand that Greg Cronin and Pat Verbeek, you, you know, if they win a game, it's a bonus right now. You know, they're not yep. making the playoffs. I got no. news for every Ducks fan in the world. They're not making the playoffs. So you, you, this is a classic case of building for the future. Don't throw him, don't throw caution to the wind and just say, okay, you got to play. This is a difficult league to play in. I mean, I think... You know, in, in many ways, I think Connor Bedard uh, has learned a lot of lessons, and there's probably some nights that he's wondering what he's doing out there too. Uh, and but but so Pat Ver and but Pat Verbeek has that luxury of a, of a long term plan. And you're right; I think it's a good idea, uh, particularly for a young guy that has never lived in North America before. This is not only a, a culture shock on the ice, but culture shock off the ice for him too. So uh, I, I I I admire. Verbeek's idea. I also admire the team's transparency because they're in this for the long term and we will have to see what happens. And yes, you're right, Rick. I would not be surprised to see other teams try to do this in the future. Uh, John, uh, Mr. Television, your opinion of Tuesday's National Hockey League slash ESPN frozen frenzy? That was good. It was fine. It, it was what it was. You know, you could watch your own game. Uh, or you could watch uh, uh, Kevin and uh, John Butchergrass do what they they did, and uh, it, it served a purpose. They had two hundred thousand viewers across the United States on average uh, for the five hour show. Um, we've seen it before in our country, obviously, in, in different forms, whether it be on the old score or whether it was on uh, uh, on, on Sportsnet. Uh, but uh, you know, I give give. Uh, ESPN and the NHL a couple of awards for, for trying to do something a little different. Here's the fascination for me. Um, and I'm not saying I'm too much of a conspiracy theorist, mm. but the press release came out about the pride tape, you know, at two o'clock the same day as, uh, as the yeah. frozen friend. And we didn't hear much about pride tape after that. No. And we heard yeah. a ton about frozen frenzy. So it's, you know, timing is an important thing when it comes to news. And all that type of stuff. Yeah, skewing positive. Hey, John, thanks for this. We'll, we'll talk to you next week. Okay, Hall of Famer. All right. <laughs> thanks, buddy.